What's good YouTube? Welcome back. Today it is Lazy Days Tubby and I'm back at it again on my solo channel doing some more history reaction for you guys today and it is some more kings and generals content for you and it is their series the Mongol invasions. We have their episode the Mongol invasions of Hungary and Poland. I'm really looking forward to finding out what they've got in store for me today. They make amazing content. So if you haven't already, head over to their page. Links in the description box down below. If you guys are enjoying my content, looking forward to future reactions, then like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. But we are going to jump straight into this one. The devastation of the Rus principalities and Eastern Europe under Subutai and Batu was one of the most expertly orchestrated campaigns of the Mongols. Though okay. they withdrew early in 1242, this was not the end of their interactions with Europe. Mm. In this video, we will present the return of Mongol armies to Hungary and Poland through the lens of the rise and fall of the Mongol general Nogai. Did you know that we have a podcast? We do. It's called Ages of Conquest, a Kings and Generals podcast, and it is quite good in our humble opinion. Recently, we finished our... Definitely go ahead and check that out. I'm going to give it a go myself. But back to the video. After withdrawing from the wreckage of the Hungarian kingdom in 1242, Batu made his encampment in the Volga steppe. While Hungary and Poland were left outside of the empire, Bulgaria and the Rus princes were now vassals of the Great Khan. Batu was important in the ascension of Monker in 1248, and sources of the period portray Batu as Monker's viceroy of the West. Though he continued to live as a nomad, Batu built a capital, Sarai, on the lower Volga River, the vast steppe lands around it serving as the heart of his empire. Mm. The devastated Rus cities were of little importance as of yet. The great wealth to be had was by control of the overland trade routes and their access points, such right, as the Black sense. Sea ports and yeah. the Caucasus. With Batu's death in 1255, and the sudden deaths of his son, Sartak, and grandson, Ilagchi, his brother Berka became Khan. Berka was a convert to Islam, at this time still uncommon within the Jochid territories. Certainly his religion played a role in the souring of relations between Berka and his cousin Hulagu when the latter destroyed Baghdad in 1258, mm. but conflict did not break out until 1262. Hulagu's seizure of the Caucasian territories and Azerbaijani pastures and the murder of Jochid princes in his retinue in February of 1260 on pretenses of sorcery were the immediate casus belli. Indeed, it was the son of one of these executed princes who led the retaliation. Of course he was going to want to go back, uh, like get revenge for his Nogai, dad. a great grandson of Jochi. Mm -hmm. Born to a concubine around 1240, Nogai could not become Khan and focused his energies on the military. He converted to Islam at a similar time to Burka and became a Tuman commander. With 30,000 men, Burka and Nogai marched to avenge Nogai's father, Tutar, taking Durbent in summer 1262, encamping outside Shirvan. Hulagu sent first his vanguard under Shiraman Noyan before setting out with his main army in August, while another Ilkhanid force under Samagar and Abitai approached. Nogai destroyed Shiraman's army in mid-October, but was forced to flee after an encounter with Samagar and Abitai. Okay. When Hulagu learned of Nogai's flight, he marched to Shimaki, where he forced Berka to withdraw. By December, Berka and Nogai retreated past Durbent, leaving a contingent to man that mighty fortress, mm -hmm. though it fell quickly to the Ilkhanid forces on the 7th of December and they continued to pursue Burka and Nogai. On the 15th, Nogai suffered a major defeat at the hands of Shiraman Noyan, Abitai, and Hulagu's son, Abaka. Seeing Nogai withdraw to the steppe, Abatai and Shiraman urged Abaka to return to his father, but the prince declined. Oh, really? With reinforcements sent by Hulagu, he followed the Jochid's trail finding Burka's abandoned camp on the north bank of the frozen Terek River. Tents, herds, treasures and families abandoned in their haste. For three days, Abaka's men celebrated their victory. They had, however, stumbled into a trap. On the 13th of January 1263, 
Burke and Nogai returned, catching Abaka's men unprepared. The Ilkhanid forces flew across the frozen river, but under their weight the ice broke beneath them. Abaka escaped back to his father, and Burka retook Durbent. Kublai Khan was unable to prevent the continued conflict between the now independent Golden Horde and the Ilkhanate. Mm -hmm. Pulagu died in 1265 and was succeeded by Abaka, an opportunity for Burka to secure the Caucasus. Nogai set out with a large army from Durbent in early summer 1265. In late July or August, Nogai was met by a force under Abaka's brother Yoshmut on the Aksu River in modern Azerbaijan. An arrow took Nogai's eye, and his army was defeated with heavy losses, withdrawing as if it took his eye, no way. To Shirvan. Meanwhile, both Abaka Khan and Burka Khan arrived with reinforcements, forming up on banks across the Kura River, shooting arrows at each other but unable to ford mm -hmm. the river. For 14 days they waited, until Burka moved towards the Georgian capital of Tiflis, but fell ill and died en route, leading to a general withdrawal to Sarai. This time Abaka did not pursue, but built a wall and ditch along the north bank of the Kura mm. River. How many times do like, leaders and generals just die mid-battle and it just changed the outcome completely? It's crazy, you just can't write history. Losing his father, his eye, his Khan, and several battles, Nogai moved west, to the land between the Dniester and the Danube rivers. Burka was succeeded by Batu's grandson, Monka Temer, who consolidated the Golden Horde. Issuing coins in his own name and conducting a census, he granted the Orthodox Church in Rus exemption from taxation, okay. and it became a staunch ally in upholding mm, Mongol rule. Interesting. Campaigns were largely halted against the Ilkhanate, though he maintained good relations with the Mamluks and meddled in the affairs of Central Asia, briefly assisting the rising Kaidu. Monka Temer's relationship with Nogai wasn't as strong as it had been with Burka, though he entitled him as the Bela Bey and largely left Nogai to his own affairs. Mm. Returning to Eastern Europe, we will briefly mention developments since the 1240s. The Mongol withdrawal gave Bela IV breathing room, and he started building up the defences of his kingdom, encouraging the nobility to build stone castles west of the Danube and on the kingdom's northeastern borders. The now depopulated Hungarian plain he gave to the Kumans, his allies through a marriage alliance between his son, Stefan, and their Khan's daughter. Okay. Marriage ties were also established with a number of his neighbors, but his requests for aid from the Pope fell on deaf ears, and he fought with King Ottokar II of Bohemia, the inheritor of the Austrian Babenberg territory. Mm. In 1253, the westernmost Rus principalities, Galicia and Volhynia declared their independence from the Mongols under Prince Daniel Romanovich. Daniel was crowned King of Ruthenia by papal envoys, but that crown was all the aid he'd received from the West, and it brought the Mongols' attention. Yeah. Initial efforts by the general Karemsa to assert authority over Daniel were unsuccessful, until Burka replaced Karemsa with the commander Burunda a okay. veteran who had distinguished himself during the invasion of Batu. Mm. In 1259, Burundi entered Galicia, Daniil fleeing to Poland and then Hungary. In Daniil's absence, his brother Vasilko and son Lev submitted to Burundi, who ordered the destruction of the fortifications of Galicia and Volhynia. Just showing his dominance there, just like I'm not having it. You ain't here? Well, I'm just going to destroy your outposts. 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 Also in 1259, Burka's envoys reached Bela IV, demanding his military assistance and a marriage alliance. Bela used the threat to try to leverage the Pope into providing him aid, which mm. the papacy declined, which forced the king to nominally submit to the Mongols, appeasing them with tribute. It would certainly explain why, when Burundi asserted the Horde's suzerainty over Galicia Volhynia, he left Hungary unscathed while he marched into Poland in November 1259. It is He's unknown how many king, men right? Burundi brought with him, 
but his Mongol and Turkic horsemen were reinforced by a sizable Galician Velenian contingent under Vasilka mm. Romanovich. Burundi bypassed Lublin and Savikost, crossing the Vistula River, and began ravaging Polish territory. His army came to Sandomir, surrounding and enclosing it with a stockade, trapping the citizens within. Mm, Missiles were hurled at the defences for three days, with so many arrows the defenders were unable to even peer over the walls. By the fourth day, ladders brought the Mongols into the city. The inhabitants fled to the keep, but on the narrow drawbridge, many fell to their deaths into the moat. Those seeking shelter. Fuck! You've got to deal with the Mongol horde or fall into a moat of your death. I think I'll take the moat. I think I would take the moat. Screw dealing with the Mongols. Let me know what you think. In the town's church were trapped as fire spread, mm. and whoever survived the conflagration was driven out onto the plain before the city and slaughtered. By April 1260, Burundi's army withdrew, mm. prisoners and loot in tow. A Mongol attack is recorded on Lithuania and Prussia in the same year, inflicting heavy losses on the Teutonic Knights, and it may have been that Burundi's forces brought fire and ruin there as well. Holy shit. When the Mongols just went trampling and they just, when they went on a raid, they really just trampled the ground and just destroyed absolutely everything they could in their path. Europe was largely spared in the 1260s due to the Burka Hulagu War, aside from a brief campaign in 1264. Michael VIII Palaiologos restored Byzantine rule in Constantinople in 1261 only to find himself sandwiched between the Ilkhanate in Anatolia and the Golden Horde in the Balkans. Seeing the Ilkhans as the more immediate threat, he sent an illegitimate daughter to be married to Hulagu Khan, imprisoned the Seljuk Sultan Kekaus II, and detained Mamluk envoys travelling to the Golden Horde. Mm. Berker wanted the Bosphorus open, and with assistance from the Bulgarian Tsar Konstantin Tik, sent an army into Thrace, rescuing the Sultan in 1264 and sending Emperor Michael fleeing to Constantinople. When Nogai came to the region in the late 1260s, he was to become the main conduit for contacts between the Khanate and the Byzantine Empire. Okay, interesting. After his arrival, Nogai's forces were invited to attack Emperor Michael on behalf of his enemy, John of Thessaly, and Nogai's army plundered Thrace in late 1271. Emperor Michael couldn't defeat these raiders in the field, so he one-upped his Thessalian enemy. In 1272, he organized a marriage alliance, marrying another one of his illegitimate daughters, Euphrosyne, to Nogai, and granted him the title of Archon. Mm, Nogai did didn't work? care for the gifts of the Byzantines, but he did make good on the requirements of the marriage alliance, prohibiting yeah, his forces and those of the Bulgarians from attacking the Byzantines. Further, it lays the foundation for Nogai's own regional ambition. The death of Monka Temer Khan in 1280, succeeded by his weaker brother Toda Monka, removed the only figure who held a leash on Nogai. In 1282, Michael VIII died while preparing to meet up with Nogai to march against John of Thessaly, What's he and gonna was do? succeeded by his less capable son Andronikos II. This left Nogai the senior figure of southeastern Europe. Okay. The new Bulgarian Tsar, George Turta, recognized Nogai's overlordship in 1284, sending his son Svetoslav as hostage and marrying his daughter to Nogai's son Chaka. Mm. Nogai cast his influence further afield, sending Buddhist relics to the Ilkhan Argon and continuing his own diplomacy with the Mamluks. He provided troops and ordered Lithuanian reinforcements for Lev Danilovich of Galicia Volynia's unsuccessful campaign into Poland in 1280. Oh, he, he supported meddled okay. in the politics of the Golden Horde. Todor Monka Khan deposed Alexander Nevsky's son Dmitri as Grand Prince in 1280, giving the title to Dmitri's brother. By 1282, Nogai assisted Dmitri in retaking the princely title, 
Mm. Our guy's representatives demanded less tax. Mate, he's making moves. He's working in the background. He's doing loads. Since then, the Khans, which encouraged immigration into his territory, to the chagrin of Rus princes who saw their tax base running away from them, sending a formal complaint to Todamonga Khan, who did nothing. By 1285, Nogai's attention was drawn to Hungary. Here, despite the Kuman leanings of King Ladislaus IV, himself of Kuman descent, a Kuman uprising rocked the kingdom, mm. culminating in a battle on Lake Hod in 1282. Okay. The Kumans who escaped fled to Nogai and urged him to act. Seeing one of the main lines of Hungary's defense having fled, and hearing of the poor relationship between young King Ladislaus and his barons, Nogai must have thought Hungary an easy target. Together with the ambitious prince Telebuka, Nogai set out for Hungary. Mm, how does this one go? The sources provide little detail on this campaign, but it is clear that this was not on the scale of 1241, intended not for conquest but to pillage. Lev Danilovich of Galicia Volinia was ordered to supply troops, but attacks by the Polish Duke Lezik the Black kept him from doing so. Nogai and Telebuka's army, augmented by other Rus princes, likely travelled through Galician-controlled Transcarpathia, entering the Hungarian kingdom in February 1285 through the northeastern Sharosh and Sepes counties. The Mongol army split some time after, cutting across the northeast and raiding as far as the environs of Buda and Pest. The okay. Mongols did not come prepared for sieges, and bypassed heavily fortified mm, points. Makes sense, makes sense. Nogai likely intended to use the maneuverability of his forces to stay ahead of the Hungarian main army, moving quickly and apparently dividing his men into small regiments to raid. But since the 1240s, Hungary had seen a growth in the number of baronies. Rather than a main army raised against them, the Mongols were confronted by local defensive forces wherever they moved. Mm, by breaking his forces off as he had, he allowed them to be overwhelmed in local engagements. One defender with particular success was a Master George, founder of the Shurish Noble House in Sharosh County, who, with his own locally raised forces, overcame Mongol troops several times mm. and sent their severed heads to King Ladislaus. Though the Mongols were faced by stiff resistance, they were able to capture their share of prisoners and loot. The sources indicate famine, hunger and sickness among the Mongols. Nogai and Telebuka must have decided to cut their losses and withdraw, moving east in two main forces by the end of March 1285. Nogai's army moved through Transylvania, but found the local peoples, Saxons, Blacks and Sekelite cavalry, blocking the passages, okay. inflicting serious reverses on Shit, Mongol parties cool. and freeing a large number of prisoners. An army under King Ladislaus further harassed their retreat. Telebuka's army tried to cross the Carpathian Mountains, but the spring weather, rain, snow and hail, destroyed the roads before them, forcing them to go off the main routes. Mm, Many were lost in the mountains, starving or freezing to death, or helped to the same end by the locals. It was an ignominious end to the campaign, though losses were likely exaggerated. On Nogai's return to his territory in 1285, he led an expansion into Dobrugia and the Danube Delta, taking Izechia and making it his capital. In 1287, okay. Todemonka was deposed by a group of Jochid princes, who appointed Nogai's comrade Telebuka as Khan. Hmm. Does this change the political aspect? In December aspect? 1287, Nogai and Telebuka marched into Poland to punish Duke Lezek for the earlier defeat of Lev Danilovich and Lezek's raids on Galicia Volinia. Nogai and Telebuka entered the country separately. Telebuka crossed the frozen Vistula and made an effort to take Sandomir. The defenders had learned from 1259. Telebuka was forced back and marched to Krakow. Mm. There, he found Nogai had invested the city since Christmas. Frustrated by Nogai and his own defeats, Telebuka abandoned the campaign pillaging through Poland and his vassal Galicia Vilinia on the way home. The defenders of Krakow fought bravely, 
and Nogai could only ravage the city's outskirts before he too withdrew in February 1288. Mm. For their valiant defense, Duke Lejek. What a shame. He was Nogai was doing so much in the background, but uh, just on the battlefield, it just didn't go his way. Granted Krakow tax exemptions. Nogai blamed Telebuka for the defeat and began looking to undermine the Khan. He did not have long to wait. Monka Temur's son, Tokta, was targeted by Tilabuka and his allies and fled, seeking Nogai's assistance. Nogai told him to prepare an army while he pretended to fall deathly ill and made his way to Tilabuka. Seemingly about to die, he summoned Tilabuka and his princes to his camp, and while cuffing up blood clots he had previously swallowed, he urged the princes to make peace with him what? before his death. With their guard let down by the old man's smooth talk, no. Tokta arrived with his forces and killed the princes. By 1291, Tokta was Khan of the Golden Horde. Mm. Nogai returned to his Ordu and expanded. He appointed a puppet Bulgarian Tsar, Smilets, and forced the Serbian king, Stefan Milutin, to accept him as overlord and send his son Stefan as hostage to Nogai's court. In Azekcia, he was minting coins in his own name. His direct control in the gold. See, yeah, he's just so much better at doing it in the background and with um, taking advantage of political aspects. That's where Nogai like, does most of his work. Golden Horde stretched past the Dniester towards Crimea, and he ordered the deaths of rival Georgid princes and officials. Resistance was growing within the Horde to Nogai's ambitions, and Nogai and Tokta Khan were soon butting heads over influence over the Rus. Mm. With tensions building, the spark came when Nogai demanded Tokta hand over his own father-in-law. Tokta refused, and Nogai declared his independence, declaring himself Khan in 12... Okay, Nog <laughs> he's, getting, he's getting a bit, bit too big for his boots. <laughs> Give me your, st uh, your dad. I'm sure it was his dad, or was it his stepdad? ...came when Nogai demanded Tokta hand over his own father-in-law. Father-in-law, so okay. Still though, still though, that is an ask. You are asking way too much, Nogai. Tokta refused, and hmm. Nogai declared his independence, declaring himself Khan in 1296. In late 1297, on the banks of the Aksay River off the Lower Don, their armies met. With over 40 years experience as a commander, Nogai had the better of this first engagement, mm. defeating and routing Tokta's army. Tokta fled, but Nogai failed to pursue. In Crimea, Nogai's grandson had been killed trying to collect tribute, and Nogai was determined to avenge him. Holy shit, you can't write history! You can't write history. His grandson was killed trying to collect taxes. Of course you're going to go back and fucking deal with that shit. Holy. But Nogai failed to pursue. In Crimea, Nogai's grandson had been killed trying to collect tribute, and Nogai was determined to avenge him, seizing mm. Catherine and other cities, but spreading his forces thin. Several princes on the Lower Dnieper rebelled, and while Nogai's sons crushed them, other princes deserted to Tokta, who in the meantime had called up reserves from the east and the border oh, with the it's Ilkhanate. Not looking good. Nogai sent messages to the Ilkhan, Gazan, hoping for his intervention. But while in Sarai, Tokta had organized a truce with Gazan, allowing Tokta to bring up those border units. Nogai realized he had outplayed his hand and withdrew to his own territory in the face of a full invasion by Tokta in 1299, with as many as 60,000 horsemen bearing down on him. Late that year, Nogai was caught on the southern Bug River. While the army stood before each other, the old dog tried one last trick. He sent a messenger to Tokta, telling him he was a sick old man and put the blame on his sons for the fighting while he sent his son Chaka upstream to flank Tokta. <laughs> Tokta's scouts alerted him and ordered an assault on Nogai's tired army, which shattered. Mm. Fleeing with 17 horsemen, 
Nogai's troop was charged by a group of Rus cavalry and he was severely wounded. Captured, he told, I am Nogai, take me to Tokta, for he is the Khan. He okay. began to be led away, but died of his injuries before he uh, reached Tokta. Thus ended mm. the reign of Nogai Khan. I tell you what though, I tell you what, he done some bits. Nogai Khan done some bits. His sons continued to be a nuisance in the area for several years, his son Chaka briefly taking control of Bulgaria, but the last of the Nogayids was soon crushed. Mm, what shame. It is this period, the rule of the Mongols over the Rus, and the ultimate collapse of the Golden Horde, which we will examine in the next video. So make sure you are subscribed to our channel and have pressed the bell button. Uh, you know I definitely have um, subscribed, got that bell button, and I hope you have as well. If you guys are looking forward to my next reaction, like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, but I will catch you in the next video.